For the snatch, our goal is to get the bar from the ground to overhead in one motion without stopping or changing direction. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our hand position. So you guys can notice the closer my hands are to my thighs, the lower the barbell sits on my legs, the wider my hands go out, the higher that barbell comes. So what we're looking for is that barbell to be right about our belt line, about the top of our pants. Once I found where that position is, I'm gonna turn my knuckles and I'm gonna face them towards the floor. That's gonna make it easier for me to use my lats, which I want to do to keep that bar in contact with my body the entire time, no matter what portion of the lift I'm in, whether I'm going down or up, that is extremely important. My knuckles are facing the ground. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my shoulder blades back and down and I'm gonna keep them in that position the entire time. Position one is gonna be the first position we're gonna talk about, and that is gonna be the barbell right about our pocket. So I'm gonna have a soft bend in my knees, push my hips back just a little bit, and that is gonna be position number one. It should be our final position before we jump or kind of leave the ground. So if I was even to do a jump and then catch it with soft knees, that's gonna be that same position. I'm gonna talk about three different positions today. We've got position one, position two, and position three. Uh, I'm gonna use these to teach you guys, but it's also something you would do regularly or use regularly to work on different portions of the snatch. So this likely won't be the last time you use them, though it may be the first time you've heard of them. That's gonna be position one. Position two is gonna be right above the knees. No matter where I'm going to or from, I always want to pass through the position. So I never get to skip one, whether I'm going to or from. So I'm gonna get into position one, soften my knees, shoulder blades back and down, knuckles facing the floor. And from here, the only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pushing my hips back. And the byproduct of that is that the barbell starts sliding down my legs and it's gonna be right above my knees. To get back up, I'm going to slide the barbell back up my legs, position one, and stand tall. We always wanna avoid that barbell leaving contact with our legs. So once I'm down to position two, I don't wanna just lift my, let, my chest and let that barbell flow out away from my body. We can get away with that with a PVC pipe where this thing doesn't really have a whole lot of gravity pulling on it, but as soon as we've got some weight on the barbell, anytime that bar is away from our body, it's going to pull us out of position. So if it is in contact with my body, I know that it is right over the center of my foot and it's not gonna be manipulating me in and out of positions that I don't wanna be in. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about position number three. So position one and position two are above the knee. Position three would be where the barbell would be sitting on the ground if it, we were going to be picking it up from the floor. So above the knee, the only thing I do is push my hips back, hips back, hips back. Once I get to position number two to get to three, now I get to drop my hips to get to my mid shin position. I should still have pretty vertical shins. I'm still squeezing my shoulder blades. Knuckles are still facing the floor. Position two, position one, and stand tall. Those are gonna be our three positions. We're mostly gonna be focusing on position one and position two to kind of teach. And then we'll work through position three a little bit later. Next thing we're gonna do, we've learned what our three positions are. Now we're going to start layering in uh, some progressions. The first one's just going to be a shrug. So we're working backwards to an extent through this lift. So from position number one, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to stand and shrug. My goal here is to just finish. This is a leg driven movement. And even though I'm not driving with my legs so much right now, what we're focusing on is the order of operations that get us to put as much energy from our legs into the barbell to make it go up. So I'm extending and then shrugging. That's what's happening. We're gonna do the same thing from position two, sopping my knees, hips back, sliding it down to my knees, keeping contact and shrug. That's a shrug from position two, the same thing's happening. Now we're just starting from position two. Layering again, this time we're gonna do everything from position two. We're going to do a high elbows. This happens slightly after, almost at the same time as our shrug. We're continuing the momentum of our legs and I'm going to shrug and then we're going to do a high elbows, getting that barbell about up to our rib cage. And as soon as it gets there, I'm gonna let it fall right back down. Again, what we're trying not to do is just lift with our arms. Even though I can do that with the PVC pipe, we are not gonna be able to do that with very much weight. So I'm thinking about driving with my legs, finishing the momentum with my arms, and as soon as I feel gravity pulling back down, I'm gonna let the barbell fall right back down to position number one. So I've got to sop into my knees, shoulder blades back and down, knuckles towards the floor, pushing my hips back behind me. Now I'm at position two, stand and high elbows, letting the PVC pipe fall right back down once it gets up to about my rib cage. We'll try that one more time. Sop into my knees, hips back, sliding the PVC pipe down to my knees, stand tall and high elbows. So that's what we're trying to do to get the barbell up to about our high elbows or kind of like a scarecrow uh, type position. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up where we left off. 
So because this is like a jumping movement, we're gonna be up on our toes, we're gonna pick up in our scarecrow position, and now we're gonna get the barbell overhead. Our goal is gonna be to catch it with our arms locked out, our shoulder blades pulled back and down, and in a nice stable position with my head in between my arms. So what that's gonna look like, elbows up, up on my toes, I'm gonna drop, pushing my hips back slightly, and the barbell is up and over top of my head. We'll stand all the way up before we bring it back down, and then I can confidently bring it right back down to my pockets. You can do all these same drills with an actual barbell, and if you're watching this to learn a snatch for the first time, I would encourage you to go once through with just the PVC pipe, and then do the exact same thing with a barbell. Uh, learn the positions with the PVC pipe, because we can hang on to it for a longer period of time, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of feedback. I kind of like to get rid of this thing as quickly as we can one time through the PVC pipe, then we'll go straight to a barbell so we get a little bit more feedback. When we are catching our position, we want our hips back behind us, so I don't wanna catch the barbell fully with my hips and knees locked out. We wanna catch it with a soft bend in our knees, my hips back behind me, so that I've got the option, if I need to, to squat down. If I catch the barbell with my knees out in front of me, I'm kind of in a sticking point where I can't get any lower if I need to, and I'm much more likely to miss the barbell forward. Something else we wanna think about is once the barbell's up there, I wanna aggressively get my head through my arms. That's gonna help me lock out quickly. Anytime I've got something heavy above my head, it is just almost instantaneous that your arms are much more willing to lock out. If I'm tucking my chin or I'm kind of pulling my head back, like I wanna be sure that the barbell's up there before I fully commit, we're gonna start creating bad habits where that barbell is always gonna to wanna to fall forward. Back to our positioning. We'll do that one more time. I'm gonna be up on my toes in my scarecrow position. I'm gonna drop down to my catch. I'll even pause in my catch. Yeah, I'm in a good position. I'm nice and stable. I'll stand all the way back up, bring the PVC pipe back down to position one. Anytime we do that, we wanna catch it with nice soft knees. So now we've kind of got the barbell or the PVC pipe up there. Now we're gonna see if we can do that same thing from position number two. For most people, this seems to be the most comfortable position and kind of the most natural to make this happen. And my advice most of the time is to not overthink it. We just kind of want to get one up there and we can kind of refine the technique afterwards. But since there's so much happening, we just want to be a little bit confident and shoot for the ceiling. So sop into my knees, shoulders back and down, knuckles towards the floor, hips back, jump and catch and stand tall bringing it back down. The thing that we do see often with the PVC pipe before we move to the barbell is even when people have great positioning working through position number one, two, and three, they tend to want to come out and around. Uh, it's really natural because this barbell or PVC pipe is so light, but we want to follow through that scarecrow position where we're pulling the barbell up our shirt and then all we're doing is turning it over to get into our overhead position. Working down below the knee, we can take it down a little bit further. The same thing's gonna happen. It just gets a little bit more awkward getting up to position number two. Once we are in position number three, maybe the most common thing that we see that we've gotta adjust a little bit is our knees being really far over the barbell. So once we get down to position number three, people tend to wanna to kinda of lean forward and they're into more of a squat than they are like a, a good position. So two cues that are really helpful is either hips back or hips up or knees back. You guys can notice the same thing happens when we do either of those cues or when we listen to either one of those cues. For some people, one just resonates a little bit better, but hips up, knees back, the same thing's gonna happen, but we wanna have nice vertical shins. If I'm covering the barbell with my knees, that is an indicator that I'm not in a good position. So that's something you guys can kind of self-regulate. If you're looking down, you're like, ah, oh, man, my knees are covering the barbell, make an adjustment. We want nice vertical shins. We don't want the barbell coming around our knees. So what I mean by that, if I'm dipping down, we can do this on the way down or the way up. If I'm dipping down, that barbell does not have a straight path. That's something that we wanna avoid by pushing my hips back. That allows me to keep a nice straight bar path. Typically, once we move to position three, we like to have things nice and slow. Think about kind of like accelerating with a car. If you just slam on the gas, you might end up peeling out. If we can accelerate through, we can kind of build up speed or we can build up momentum. So we wanna be smooth and steady from the ground to our knees and then aggressive from our knees to our hips. Don't need to worry about being aggressive now, but just as far as our mindset goes, we're not trying to rip the bar or the PVC pipe from position number three to position number two. Typically, once we get to position number three, we'll work through those progressions again. So from position number three, we'll stand and shrug. Then we'll go back down to position number three We'll stand in high elbows, and then we'll go back down to position number three, and we'll see if we can do a full snatch. When we do catch the barbell up, up and above our head, we always wanna be in that locked out position. If we were carrying something heavy, it would be intuitive for most of us that if my elbows and my shoulders are locked out, I can support something longer 
than if my elbows are bent and maybe it's right above my head. So we don't wanna to get to this position and then lock out. We want that position immediately. Shoulders and elbows locked out, shoulder blades back and down, and just a soft bend in our knees with our hips back just behind us. Typically, we'll run through everything with a PVC pipe. We'll do something very similar with the barbell, and most people get to snatching pretty quickly, pretty effectively. This is something that takes an incredible amount of time to get really good at. An analogy that I like uh, for like our golfers out there is I think it's really similar to golf where uh, whether you're good at golf or you're not good at golf, you go to a driving range and you hit a ball and it goes straight. It's super satisfying. You don't feel like you could do that every time. But the next one you kind of hook, the next one you slice, but working those nuances to get more often for that ball to go straight down the fairway is what ends up being satisfying. And for most people, the snatch is really similar. You'll do one snatch, and you're like, I feel like I could add 100 pounds to this. And then the next three, you miss one forward, you miss one backwards, it feels super heavy. But the nuances that get us to a good snatch are kind of the thing that make it satisfying. The two common things that we see that cause people kind of some issues or create some bad habits from the beginning are one, people wanting to squat down from our kind of initiating, going from position one to position two. So once we have that soft bend in our knees, we're not raising our hips up and down. That tends to be really common or feel like it's what people wanna do, but we wanna be sure that we're pushing our hips back. This is a hinging position. We are loading up our glutes and our hamstrings. Once our knees have that soft bend, we should no longer be moving up and down. We're only pushing our hips back behind us. Once we get to the actual snatch, even a lot of times we will be moving through really good positions, but once we go to get the barbell or PVC pipe overhead, it's really common that people want to pull the barbell early. So they wanna to pull to get it up there, and that tends to just kind of create some bad habits. So if you can think nice long arms, we do not want any pulling. We're not trying to pull the barbell up and over our head. We want our arms as long as possible for as long as possible. So I don't want my arms bending until I've hit full extension, where now I'm really just pulling myself under the barbell. I'm not trying to pull the barbell up. So I hope this guy was helpful for you guys. If you wanna see another video on this, maybe with an actual barbell or for the clean, uh, let us know in the comments below, and uh, we hope you guys have a great day.